Hi everybody, and thank you for watching the CLF Research YouTube channel. Today we are going to talk about Leo Fender's so-called breadboard instruments, and what they were for is quick testing of pickups. So let us take a look at a one here. So basically all this instrument really is, is just a means to uh, put pickups on very quickly, check pickup positioning and so forth. And they're assembled using a flat board. If you can imagine, like someone might use to cut bread on. So there, that became the name, the breadboard instrument. This particular one started life in the 1960s uh, at the Fender Company when Leo Fender's lab was still inside the Fender Company. So you see the Fender uh, bridge. A little bit later in the 70s, it was refitted with a Music Man neck in the CLF research years. And uh, in the, probably sometime in the 80s, you see this, it's equipped with two MFD uh, single coil pickups and electronics. So the, how this really worked is, is he would put pickups onto boards and that way he could easily test different combinations of things. You can still see the original you know, four holes. This is Fender Days. Then he bolts on this plate and he adds a three bolt Music Man neck. The bridge stays the same. So this particular one is kind of cool because in Leo's world, in his lab, uh, the brand sort of faded away. It was just his continuous path. So you saw, oh, Fender, Music Man, G, you know, this is all wrapped up in one thing. And if the thing he was testing at the time were these pickups. Here's another one. I just uh, haven't seen this one in years. Oh my God, it's a lot of dust coming off. And this one's a guitar version. This is, uh, he was working on the Sabre guitar at the time, the Music Man Sabre guitar. And in fact, there are some notes here. You can even see that he's made about the Sabre pickups. And how this would work, you see here, here's a pickup, it's mounted on a board. And he could just slide it in, adjust height, and he could decide where he likes the pickup positioning. I don't know if you can see that well from that angle. Let me hold it up here. So you can see he could move the pickup, decide where he, maybe he likes it. He could try different combinations, all by having pickups mounted on these little boards. This is a pretty cool idea. And you can see the pickup, you know, it's got a little output on there. It's got two outputs, you know, it's got a quarter inch an RCA. So these breadboard instruments were sort of the heart of the laboratory where he could quickly test pickups. You know, before you go out and route bodies and stuff, it's, it's handy to have something like this to do a quick and dirty test of things. And you can see there's like lines marked on here with pencil, maybe where he liked something, you know? It was, these are real working research and development artifacts, I think are just fantastic. Oh, Boy, again, another one that started life at Fender. Look at our four whole things. Boy, this is, this one's really been through the, uh, uh, was probably a real workhorse. This one is actually um, a Stingray guitar pickup cover. A Stingray guitar pickup cover with a magnetic field design humbucking coils beneath it. So this is probably late 70s tinkering right here. So it's kind of kind of fitting, really, if you look at this guy, how this, it seems like this tester kind of sort of stopped a little getting much use, probably in the 70s, uh, because it's still got, you know, the Music Man bridge and the neck and so forth. But this is kind of a cool period piece to go with it. And actually these pickups are, if you look at what Leo did here with the magnetic field design underneath these Stingray sized, and, then, and this width, by the way, is, is about the same as a Jazzmaster. So if you can think about what we would, did with the Doheny V12, those pickups in a sense are kind of cousins of what Leo was uh, tinkering around with uh, at this time, but never put to production. The F100 pickups, for those that are curious, are actually narrower, just like the Sabre guitar pickups were narrower. So I think that's about it. We have the uh, Leo Fender breadboard instruments. This is a guitar one that started in the 60s and it's seen action through the 70s. That's for sure, it was real dusty. And there's this one that I love because we know it started in the 60s. Uh, it passed through the 70s era uh, and certainly into the 80s 
with the MFD stuff touching all three brands. So this is really the essence of what CLF research is all about. It's sort of like where Leo's work, all of it kind of sort of came together. It's really all of it in this lab because the contents of this lab began really when it began in his Fender years, then it ended up here and the Music Man instruments were first made at CLF Research and then GNL. But the, the constant is the benches, all this equipment dates back uh, many years. So it's sort of like whatever brand Leo was working on, once it was inside his lab, that melted away and it was just how he could move forward. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the story of the breadboard instruments and I hope to uh, see you next time. Thank you.